Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Allie Beer and your guide to demystifying your world. Today, we celebrate episode 50 of Let's Get Metaphysical, connecting heart and mind. And I feel so deeply honored for our special guest, D. Wallace. Well, many people say you create your reality me being one of them, D <laughs> actually shows you exactly how you can choose to create your reality. Those of you watching the video may recognize her as a girl next door smiling persona and also the mother in the movie E.T. D. Wallace is an internationally known actress 250 film credits, six series, over 400 commercials, four new movies since January. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, your timing just got you out of New York before our latest snows. It's still yeah. snowing here. You appeared on every major network, talk show, including Oprah and the Today Show. And what you may not know, is Miss Wallace earned her teaching credentials from the University of Kansas and worked as a teacher in the public school system, as well as her own dance and acting studios. She is, take my word for it, she is a natural teacher. And the principles that she found working for children well, they also work for adults. So she parlayed all of that into uh, daily sessions, radio show, six books, kids books. Her work is based on the principles of accepting responsibility and loving ourselves early on to create the life we desire. She's a strong advocate for accepting at an early age our own magnificence and power in a positive, loving way. She points out a child's personality is set, set between ages zero to eight, and that's directly impacting the creation of each person's life. Dee's important message to the world is, Love yourself beyond anyone or anything else. Love yourself so much that you can't do anything that doesn't make you love you more. Dee authored six books on the subject of self-creation, conscious creation, the big E, exclamation point, bright light, getting stuff and wake up now, exclamation point. Her latest book, Born, is a manifestation primer that for those of you who can't see, I am holding it up now and I'll be talking about it quite a bit more. She conducts a live call in internet radio show each Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. She offers monthly webinars on a variety of creation subjects. Dee conducts private sessions from her home in Woodland Hills, California, via phone and in person as a much sought off speaker. Dee spoke in at numerous national and international venues, including the Love and Harmony Forum in Japan, the Dylan Lecture Series, Unity Temple, the Kansas Film Commission, and also is asked to speak in China, New Zealand, Amsterdam, and all over the US and Canada. She's appeared on every major news and talk show and has been featured on E! True Hollywood Stories and Oprah. Now, I discovered her teachings on Daniel John Hahnemann's Spiritual Rockstar podcast. You may recall he was one of the really cool guests on this show. And oh my goodness, I'm sitting there listening to everything she's saying and sharing. It's like, 
I've been teaching all that stuff for 25 years. And I even use the same words. And then I started following you and I immediately ordered you. <laughs> and it, it's all the same words, but holy crow, I was missing some major pieces, which had my world often looking the way I wanted. But now I know what was missing. In the past few months, you've actually become my definition of a friend. A friend is someone who reminds you of what you already know, but forgot. And so I see you as a friend and a mentor, and you have dramatically changed my world and my life, which means I get to go out there and assist others in their life changes. So it's very much love and joy. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you all to our show. Oh, I just don't know how I could ever, ever live up to that introduction. <laughs> that was amazing and wonderful, especially the last part. It's got me kind of teary. It, you know, to know that your work and who you are, the essence of who you are, touches people in a positive way and lifts them up. That's you can't ask for anything more than that for me. And that's so clear, the love and joy that you have for everything that you do and for the whole world, not just the individuals. Because as you know, we don't just make a difference in one life because it's something that is for the greater good and not just mankind. I, I live in the country and I look out at the wild animals in my yard and the plants and I read a lot about the secret life of plants and they're highly intelligent and it's nothing we do only impacts us. Uh, absolutely. We literally are creating the world we live in. And, um, you know, I think if people understand that we're electrical beings, they measure our hearts through electrocardiograms, our brains through electroencephalograms. So every thought, every feeling we have has an electrical frequency to it, which shoots out into the universe, which is electromagnetic. So whatever we're sending out, positive or negative, the universe is looking to magnetize to that and that gets sent back to us as the reality of our lives. That's why the more positive, uh, the more loving, the happier and more joyful you are, the more you literally magnetize to you the things that you want. Yeah, it's so, I've been different all my life. People would have said I was weird. And recently I've been attracting people like me. Like me is like you, you constantly learn and grow. You're the only person I know who read power versus force. Like most people never heard of it. What? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's one of the first books that I read and it brought so much together for me. And it's, it's so indicative of our world right now. Um, a lot of people you see don't want to be powerful because their definition of power is really force. And right. they don't want to be that. But true power comes from the strength and magnificence of love and when you are centered in and are the frequency of powerful love you cannot misuse your power and that's something i i've learned well in the last 25 30 years that well i like the way the universe works uh first yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it, it does everything perfectly. And I used to be somebody who was into myself. I was a mainstream psychotherapist, worked in crisis care. And the universe kept saying, get out of here, get out of here. You have someplace better to be. 
and I wouldn't go and I wouldn't go. So the universe hit me upside the head with a two yeah. by four, literally really bad brain injury, took me into this world of everything you were just talking about. I have these really cool high tie make them out of hangers because I think that way people can relate for measuring the energy coming from a person and teaching people how to be careful your field isn't open too wide because when I first learned that, and I told my mentor, wow, measured my friend's energy and she was 30 feet away. He said, that's not a good thing because everybody passing in her field's going to be hitting her. So, and just seeing how everything works as energy. I was measuring what my brain does and how I control things. And I have little hangers that are very much like dousing rods. And the person teaching me this, it, he was actually teaching the science of getting rich. Uh, he worked with Bob Proctor back then. And I, I always did everything with my eyes closed. And he said, point them like to, over there to the, our, to the painting. Now point them the other way to the door. And I think everybody else was succeeding with that. He told me mine was spinning, spinning, spinning. I had just had that brain injury, which is proof of what's going on up here can get really discombobulated. That I, because of studying all the same kind of stuff you're teaching, that I'm not my body and I'm not my mind. But man, when I had a brain injury, it sure impacted how I was living my life. Where are you in that realm? Well, in which realm? Well, uh, oh, of, <laughs> what okay. exactly do you sorry, want to I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, conscious awareness is the only reality. It's our eternal being, our spirit, our soul. And we aren't really our body and we aren't really our mind because that's just the vehicle that we're using in this lifetime to, as I believe, grow our soul to a, a, evolve to a higher level. So I get really confused because I am living in the body. I see you being impacted by things. Well, sure. I think we're in embodiment on earth because it's an entirely uh, different experience for us to learn how to handle our free will. And most people aren't using their free will at all. Um, they're following somebody else or reacting to somebody else or something else and really not clearly, and I talk a lot about this in Born, really choosing and committing and holding the focus on only what they want. So if we are in reaction to other people, that's where our focus is going. And religion, spirituality, and brain science all say the same thing. Wherever you put your focus on, that's what grows. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, like the situation with uh, Russia and Ukraine right now, are you purposefully seeing a world of peace and love, or are you getting all caught up in the involvement of the fear of, oh my God, there's a new war and it's going to be a cold war and you know, it's going to affect us monetarily and all, all the stuff that everybody, you know, gets, gets all up in when things like this happen. But when we are those electrical beings, and we are, if we shoot out, no, I see a world of love. I see a world of integrity. I see a world of peace. And literally create that within us then and this is science when you when the frequency of you shifts the all frequencies around you must shift also 
So I, again, we're not, like you said, we're not only creating ourselves, we are creating, putting into the collective consciousness, which becomes the mass consciousness, which becomes the reality of the world we live in. And what I've been aware of, the circles that I'm in, uh, like your circle, like when I get on your Sunday morning call and I read your daily email, which is extraordinary. And I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to be copying. Uh, I won't choose yours. I won't copy yours, but I'll be creating my own daily email because it's. Hey, you so get the good. word out any way you can, baby. <laughs> so there's so much love in the circles I know and what I like to say is we're the ones we've been waiting for we're here on earth at this time in such numbers because we know that love and joy is the only way to raise the frequency of people of the planet. It's the only way to bring the peace. Exactly what you just said. If you're going to focus on the pain and the struggle. And I haven't listened to Greg Braden recently. I'm guessing he probably has some kind of updated stuff out there now. Yeah. Yeah, so um, are you aware of anything that he's done recently on this topic of the love to counter all of the negativity? Well, I think a lot of the brain experts now, um, uh, Bruce Lipton, Joe Dispenza, uh, a lot of them um, realize and have literally been able to measure uh, the difference that focused love uh, does in affecting frequencies. And that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. That's, so, you know, that's... if you walk, it's as simple as this. If you walk into a party and over in that corner, people are arguing and you can read their expressions that they're negative or they're angry. And over here, everybody's laughing and having a great time. Which corner are you gonna <laughs> gravitate to, right? Yeah. You, you want to go to the fun corner where everybody's having fun. You don't want to get all up in that other stuff. But we are, we are taught in this world from a very early age to struggle. That you have to struggle in order to get what you want. You have to struggle to earn your right to have what you want. And it's not true. It's... Uh, it's a, not a correct teaching, and it's one that we all now need to reparent ourselves with, knowing that life can and should be easy and joyful, that we live in the flow, and that love creates our highest desires of our heart. It's uh, so fascinating uh, the way you put it. I raised two kids who were performers from the age of 11. And I used to get upset with my son when I'd see all his friends lining up their summer jobs. My son's a gifted musician and he didn't go out after jobs. He get the phone call, come play our show, come play this concert. He never made any effort. And for That's a long- the way it worked. Yeah. I have sat in, well, I haven't just sat though. Every day I create. Every moment we live in is a moment that creates the next day, the next month, the next year. So if you're always creating consciously, then your life pretty much just flows along. I mean, I sat at home and four films four or five films since January have just come to me. Now mm -hmm. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't go out and create those because I didn't know they were out there, but I can create me being in alignment with the joy and love of doing great projects and being very clear that I want a project that is well-written with great people uh, that I really love to work with and great material who pay me well 
also. Uh, and then it, it, it will find you. Just like your son, it's a perfect example. Yeah, it's so perfect. And this is a, a perfect segue into my sponsor break. So I, and I wanna continue with that in just a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. I've been a member of Audible for seven years. I have quite the extensive library. And what they're offering now is a free trial for 30 days, because there's so much in there, not just audiobooks. And you know, whenever I talk about audio, I talk about a book that I'm currently reading. And I know I'm showing you the paperback, but when I get a book, I get the audiobook and the print copy because I like to write notes in there and I like to listen all day long. So uh, this is Dee's book, Born, and we're going to talk about it in some depth because I've been through it at least four times. Oh, I, wow! <laughs> I read or listen to it every single day because even though I thought I was teaching the same stuff for 25 years, it's like, oh, I didn't even realize I was stuck in this area of my life. <laughs> and I had no idea I was running those programs that somebody put into me when I was a kid. It's like, yeah. so I have the link down in the show notes. It's audibletrial.com forward slash A-L-I-T-L-C. I can't recommend the book highly enough. In fact, it's impacted my world so much that, you know, if you've been in my Facebook group, I've been talking about starting our book club for Met Let's Get Metaphysical. This is the book that we're going to start with. All of the oh, links awesome. for everything in the show notes. So... Getting back to what we were talking about, I had, I'm very self conscious about the fact that this shoulder is very forward. Why was it forward? Because after the brain surgery, I did a movement and I dislocated my shoulder blade. Only I didn't know that's what happened. So I didn't ask for help to put it back. So the neurosurgeon tells me, well, you can't fix it because the nerve controlling it was lost in the surgery. So yesterday, I'm listening to your book, and I get so many answers in my meditation. I then meditate, and it says, no, that has nothing to do with the nerve because the shoulder was moving perfectly fine after the surgery. It has to do with the belief that I got from, he was a magnificent neurosurgeon, but he put that in there. And yeah. for 10 years, I've been struggling with not being able to get my shoulder where it belongs. And now I know why, and I know I'm gonna get it back there. So I just, I can't think, that's just one well, thing. And that's, that's what I mean. We, you know, energy, everything's energy, and it, but energy is neutral totally neutral it's got to have a direction and if we don't consciously give it a direction and the direction we want then it will take its direction from doctors from the television <laughs> from old religious beliefs that definitely do not serve you in your empowerment uh, you know to childhood lessons and beliefs that we were either taught or or we watched models for us um so it's astounding to me the more i work with people to find out that they think that their thoughts and their feelings just have to happen that they don't have any choice over Whoa. the thoughts that they're thinking or the feelings that they're feeling. And, <laughs> and it's just not true. You are the God of you on this plane. Nobody can think a thought for you, feel a feeling for you, hold a perspective or a belief for you that you do not choose. That makes you your own creator on this plane. And so if you don't consciously 
choose the thoughts and the feelings that support what it is you want, then your energy will take direction from any of the fears or limitations the world's going to give you. That is such a major, major lesson for people to really yeah. get. And I, I know I have working with clients the same kind of experience you do, where you have somebody come up on stage to help the person and you ask, what do you want? Yeah. Would you share that experience? <laughs> <with me? laughs> well, the story I usually tell, and you know, you call somebody up, you don't even know their name. They go, hi, I'm Kathy. Hi, Kathy. What do you want? I don't want to have to worry about money. <laughs> Great. What do you want? Well, I, I, I don't want to be in fear that I don't have enough money. Great. What do you want? Well, I, I, I don't want to hate money. I, this goes on for 20 minutes. And uh -huh. finally, they get so pissed off at me. They say, I want more money. And I go, good. That's the first time you told me what you wanted. That's the first time the universe heard what you, look, if, if everybody would just think of the universe as a computer, if you don't put in exactly what you want an answer to in your computer, it can't find it for you. So uh, take me to why I hate money so much so I can have more money it's going to say no page found <laughs> and cancel it out. You have to say what you want. And then you have to take it from I want to I am creating. So all of us want more money. Now, when I say that, what comes up for everybody? Do, do old childhood teachings come up for you because that was a big one for me it took me a couple of years to work through that one I was raised in a very poor family uh, church going family and I was taught you never need more than you need and they're the rich people we're the good people which sums up how I looked at wealthy people for a long time. And yet I wanted to be one of them. So you can't judge and hate what you want to create. Doesn't work. You repel it. Right? And the universe just sits there and goes, okay, I don't know what the heck you want. So I'll just sit here and wait. Right? So I had to you know, cut to ET years later. And here I am, the flavor of the month and making money and in demand. And my little girl in me is going, God's not going to like you now. You better watch out. People are going to judge you now. Your friends are going to leave you now. You're one of them now. And I really had to work through the fact that Money isn't the root of all evil. What you do with money is so your consciousness, your consciousness creates the yin or the yang in your life. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm conscious that the more money I make, the more joy I can bring to my family the more I can give to all of the charities that I love to give to like little furry people with four paws, um, <laughs> save the children. Uh, you know, I do a lot of good in the world with my money because I have enough money to take care of me and then share it. My cup runneth over. But if you don't love yourself enough and love yourself enough to give you what you want without judgment, your cup stays half full. 
you know, a really big piece that I was missing until I read more <laughs> was putting out what I want. And I do some phenomenal creating. I had two brain injuries. Doctors say I wouldn't get better. I got better because yeah. the universe and my guides and angels work with me. But what I didn't know is when you put out your request, you got to love it. That's a big piece to be missing. It's, it's the piece. It's the piece. It, it and, is. And if, if you love what you're creating, then you have to love yourself enough to receive it. Yes. And I, I think another really, really important chapter in Born is the three pillars. Because if the three pillars aren't all in place, your creation is watered down or you get it and it goes away. I know a lot of people relate to that one. And the three pillars are how you see yourself, how you see the world, and how you see the world seeing you. Now, again, those are pretty much locked into your brain by eight years old. So what were you taught or what were you modeled about the thing you want to create? So for me, for example, I saw myself as an actress. But if I looked out in the world and said, I'm an actress and I live in Kansas, but I don't see a world out there that's going to, there's no place for me, you know, nobody even knows me. Or, or I look at everybody out there and going, well, casting directors don't even know who I am and nobody's going to see me. And, you know, then your creation is thwarted there because all those things have to come together. I see me as an actress. I see the world that I can be an actress in. And I see everybody in my business looking at me going, I want to work with her. And then everything meshes together. I have so many answers that came. I'm sorry. I know I keep going back to the book, but I'm I want to <laughs> change my life. I spent my whole life feeling invisible from the time I was a little kid. So I had to be number one at everything I did in my life. So I know I'd be seen. And I don't even want to go into the examples that, that happened even in my adult life. And after reading the book and I saw things clearly, suddenly every place I go, I could be in a small room. I could be in a big room with nearly a hundred people. And everybody's like, I want to hear you talk because you're so wise. It's I'm being seen. Yeah. So but you had to see yourself first. Oh, God, I didn't even realize that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How can they see you if you don't see you? Of course. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Yay, yippee. Uh. It's a whole lot nicer being seen. <laughs> oh, you bet it is. You bet it is. And and when you're seen and know you're seen, you can affect the world. You know, I people often ask me, you know, they think they're they're going to really get me on this one. How can you do all this healing work and do all those horror films? Right. Well, I say, you know, it works out in my life really well that I do all these horror films about fear. And then I spend the other half of my life teaching people how to heal themselves from fear. Because I can tell you from doing all my movies that fear isn't real. It's all just a movie. It's all just uh -huh. your imagination. Wow. And, and when we truly know that we are the gods of us on this plane and take responsibility for creating everything I want and we want, things just flow and the magic happens. 
wow, 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 thank you. <laughs> Well, I, when I was 16, I went to Universal Studios and I saw how some movies that used to scare me are made and how it wasn't real. But I still yeah. don't watch horror movies. It still I don't watch them me. either. I don't watch them either. I just do them. <laughs> and you know, I get a lot of joy out of doing them because I have a been blessed with a very, very full emotional life. And I can hook into those emotions. And I love that. I love that as an actress. And I love finding all those nooks and crannies in me. That's fun for me. And that's probably why I attract so many of them. Although the last, yeah. the last film I just did was a lovely little family film. And the film I did b before that was a romantic comedy. So, you know, I, I just want, and, and am clear about what I want, uh, which by the way, most people think they are and most people aren't at all. So those of you watching and listening, I would get off and write down exactly what you want. If it's in a relationship, write down exactly what you want in that other person and in the relationship. And don't forget perfect health, financial abundance, and also put in there that each of you in the relationship is complete and whole within themselves. Mm -hmm. You're not going into a relationship because you need somebody to define you or they need somebody to define them, right? Or write down everything you want about money. It's so funny when people uh, come up on the stage and want to work on money and I'll go, okay, how much do you want to make this year? Totally blank look. Oh, um, well, I don't know. Well. How's the universe going to magnetize to I don't know? You got it. You have to have a, a number in mind. You know, you have to know what you want and ask for it. Now, in the good book, it says, ask and you receive. But most people don't know that the original meaning of ask in Hebrew is claim or demand. So you're not saying, oh, please, if I'm worthy, can it? No, you're saying this will be delivered to me now. And so it is. Yes, I, I, most people, I, I teach how to say prayers at work. It's not a supplication. It's what you were just saying. Yes, it's a partnership. Absolutely. I love that you do so much focusing on young children. This is another thing. <laughs> I wrote four books on parenting and because of what I read in Born, I realized with the whole personality being set by the age of eight, and I can see in my own life why things happen as they did. Yeah. My, the book that I wrote for teens, for parents of teens, I need to reorganize that. It needs to be for much younger children. So I'm going to be rewriting it. It's like, of course, it's obvious. And so many young parents today, the thing is, you say, you can only do what you know. But I don't think that's so true anymore or legitimate because. What, what does that even mean? That's a good question. <laughs> that even mean that you can only do what you know I didn't know how to be an actress but I chose made a clear choice and committed to it and then I went and studied and then I studied some more and then I worked a little I studied some more I mean the only thing you have to begin with is loving yourself enough to be brave enough to ask for what you want mm -hmm. and commit to that. 
If you don't have that in the beginning, creation process can't work for you. That is one of the most powerful messages I've ever, ever heard went right into my heart. Uh, I'm wondering as we're coming to a, a close, because that was such a powerful message. Was there any other message that you wanted to share with everyone? Just, you know, the more you can love yourself and by the way, you were never taught to. We are taught to give ourselves up for others from the moment we're born, pretty much. Wow. And the more you can love yourself and honor yourself, and know your self-worth and know how important you are, not only in the creation of you, but in the creation of the world and the universe, the more you can love yourself to create that, the more your life will be the life you want. Totally makes sense to me. <laughs> I thank my mother every day for teaching me what she taught me when I was little, the integrity and the truthfulness and the love and the service. Um, when it, uh, every day I take my dog on a gratitude walk and I thank her and I say, you know why mom? Cause I really love who I am. Thank you for letting me love who I am. This website is a treasure trove of everything you could possibly desire. Sign up for the list. And in my opinion, that's a very powerful gift for everybody. Well, yes, they can get my, mon my Monday e-blast goes out every Monday. I have daily short emails with little gems that go out daily. Anybody can call into my talk show on Sunday mornings for free and ask the channel uh, absolutely anything that you want. And there's a lot of free stuff on my website, a lot of free things that you can go on and listen to, to acquaint okay. yourself with my work more. Okay, and everybody, you will find all those links in the show notes. I thank you, thank you. I thank you for being you. I thank you for sharing who you are because clearly you're making changes in the world because you can't make a change in a person and not have it go out to everybody else in their world. Well, so. you've certainly made a change in my world today. I okay. thank you so much. You can just really feel your love and and your gratitude which i'm very grateful for thank you and i want to remind everybody to go in the links below be sure you join our facebook group I want to be real sure you know how to get into the book club and the link is also there for our show page so that you can have a choice if you want to listen or watch the video and oh the special uh, well that would be the special thing is the book club and i want to remind you to enjoy that's i n capital j o y every moment because you don't live your life out outside of you you live it all within your body mind spirit so enjoy every moment and i will see you here next time